Hello, this is Will Norman with Thrifty AV. In a previous video I tested an RX2, a SEMA Video Copy Master Stabilizer, and a VideoCraft Guard Stabilizer using copy protected VHS source material. The link is provided in the description. For this demonstration I have acquired two more video stabilizers a used Clearline Concepts VC1 and a new old stock VTI VC3. I've obtained a sealed VHS copy of the Disney movie Mulan from 1999. Using a sealed copy should increase the likelihood that the tape is in good condition. Before testing the video stabilizers I want to demonstrate four DVD recorders of four different brands and how they each respond to an attempt at dubbing a copyrighted VHS tape. A professional monitor with HV delay, also called pulse cross, will display sync and color signals that are normally outside the frame of video. I will also use underscan to display as much signal as possible. As you can see, the white and super black blocks can clearly be seen under the pulse signal this is a telltale indication of macrovision copy protection. You can also see artifacts in the instability of the video signal caused by macrovision in a waveform monitor. We will start with the Samsung DVD-R155 that was used in the prior demonstration. When I hit record on the remote I receive the message, you cannot record copy protected movie. Next, I will attempt to record on my Panasonic DMR ES15. With this unit, I receive the message, Copyrighted material. This content cannot be copied, cannot record. When I attempt to record on the Philips DVD-R3576 HDD DVD recorder, I see recording error. This program is not allowed to be recorded. With the Polaroid DMR2001G, the recorder stays in pause mode with the phrase copy protection in parentheses and the word protect in the upper right. The error messages were different, but the results were the same. None of these units would record the Disney Mulan VHS tape when the output of the VHS was plugged directly into the unit. The first filter I will use for this demonstration is the Clearline Concepts VC1 Video Clarifier. This unit was acquired on eBay for $4.75 plus $8.71 shipping. It features RCA ins and outs and lacks S-Video. There is a switchable RF transmitter that sends out an NTSC signal on either channels 3 or 4. The unit also has a knob for color adjustment and a switchable noise reduction circuit. The box also claims that it recognizes and corrects low sync signals and boosts video output level. The unit is powered by a 9 volt power adapter that came with it. On the box there's an interesting disclaimer regarding duplication of copyrighted material. I could not find a manufacture date on this unit, but a Google search indicated that this unit was available in the mid-1990s predating my test tape by several years. When the output of the VCR runs through the VC1, HV delay shows that macrovision artifacts remain on the signal, so this is a concern. Closed captioning information is preserved. The noise reduction button did reduce noise, but slightly softened the picture. The color knob affected saturation, not hue. All four units were able to record, but there was occasional dropout on the Samsung. The Panasonic had some tearing. On the Philips, the image shifted to the left and had a black bar on the right and had tearing that made this video pretty much unwatchable. By far, the unit that handled the signal the best was the Polaroid. The VC1 has an RF modulator, so I decided to try it out. Unfortunately, my Samsung recorder lacks RF in and out, so I started with the Panasonic. I had the same tearing on the Panasonic that occurred with the video out. On the Philips, I had to program the recorder in order for it to recognize the signal, but afterward it was able to record, but with the same glitches encountered with the video input. The Polaroid was able to record from the RF input, but the signal looked remarkably worse than using the video input. Next, I'm trying out the VTI VC3. 
This new old stock unit was also acquired on eBay for $14.99 with free shipping. Like the VC1, this unit lacked a manufacture date, but Google indicates that this unit has been around since at least 1996, so it predates my copy of Mulan. This is a more stripped down unit than the VC1 with just RCA ins and outs. It lacks an RF modulator, color correction knob, and noise reduction switch. However, the instructions say that like the VC1, it corrects sync signals and boosts video output levels. There is no plug for a power adapter. Instead, the VC3 runs on four AA batteries. Like the VC1, there is a copyright disclaimer on the packaging. The VC3 did not remove the white and super black blocks caused by macrovision. So again, this was a concern. I was able to successfully record on the Samsung DVD recorder without a copyright error message. The Philips started to record but then cut off with a warning message. Also the signal had issues. With the Polaroid, the macrovision signal that was not filtered was clearly affecting the auto gain control, causing major problems with the signal. Well the VC1 and the VC3 both had issues. So I decided to revisit my RX2 unit. Changing out the filter to the RX2 instantly improved the video signal on the Polaroid as the macrovision blocks were removed. The signal looked good and it recorded. I was also able to record using the Samsung, the Panasonic, and the Philips. In conclusion, the video filter that has worked the best with macrovision over my two review videos has been the RX2. If anyone knows of another video filter I should try out in a future video, please comment below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.